Dude, Dream is so fucking cool. Dream's he like so plays. Cool, he like plays video games and he's really good at him. I want to marry him someday. He's like a like Wait, a mind, he's, he's like a white guy with a green hoodie, and that's his entire character. Minecraft YouTuber. Great. Oh yes, I've heard. That. <laughs> he's just green Donagal. Cool. All right, everyone. Today we are going to be talking about I Divine Cybermancy. I Divine Cybermancy is a video game. But we are not ready to go into this yet. Because if any of that's going to make sense to you, you need to know the story of Struman Studios. Alright, let's get it. So, Struman Studios is a small game development company. And when I say small, I mean like 10 people, and they were all friends in high school. And this is one of those weird European friend groups that gets like really uh, into Warhammer 40k. Uh, now, do you guys know what Warhammer 40k is? I'm somewhat familiar. I do, because my, my dad worked at Games Workshop for a while. Do you want to just explain it real quick? Uh, Warhammer 40k is a miniature game the fan that takes place in like a fantasy world, and there are a bunch of bubbles everywhere that contain like their own dimension. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like very fantasy sci-fi. And 40k is both the year and price of the game. It is notoriously expensive and notoriously complex. So this friend group was really into Warhammer 40k, but they had one problem. It wasn't quite complex enough. So they made something called Ava. Ava is a homebrew role-playing system that is essentially Warhammer with hundreds of pages added to the rules. There is new weapon systems, entire new species, pages and pages of new lore. It's ridiculous. So, Half-Life 2 comes out, and this friend group decides that this needs to be a video game. So they make a Half-Life 1 total conversion mod called Syndicate Black Ops. And what they do is they literally copy and paste the tabletop rules from this and shove it into the game. As a result, this is a deathmatch first-person shooter where it takes 20 minutes to make your character. And every time you die, you have to make another one. <laughs> <laughs> and let's make this worse. This is a French game. So oh. you pick the item, <laughs> and it gives you two sentences in French. And then there's a meme. So normally, you are picking your loadout based on the internet memes you find the funniest in this list. And most people's experience is they spend 20 minutes to make a character, they get in, and the only people playing this game still are veterans of the game. So they kill you instantly, you spend another 20 minutes, you die again, and you quit the game. But it's really rewarding to spend the hours it takes to come up with a loadout that works. Because first of all, when you survive your first two minutes in deathmatch, it is ridiculously rewarding. But also, you see the craziest shit in this game. You can use pit bulls as a weapon. There's a sniper rifle that shoots nuclear bombs. <laughs> and no, no, I don't mean bombs. I mean nuclear bombs, because these maps are massive. It will take you 50 minutes to walk to either side. So they, like, fill, like, a big chunk of the map. Yes. Okay, that's great. And these sniper rifles are a weapon you can just equip from the get-go. That's awesome. You just, it doesn't tell you what it is. You just have to experiment and figure it out. All right. <laughs> so we'll get to this later. Keep this in mind. Unreal. But this game, obviously, it wasn't for everyone, but it kind of developed this cult following. And then Radio Silence, for 10 years, all of a sudden, they just announced on their, like, webpage that they're making a first-person shooter campaign game that's going to take all of the elements of this game and make it more cohesive. And it's also going to be a sequel to the lore in Ava, which is something we don't have access to. They've never published this rule system, but we know that there's a lot in it. So everybody on the internet collectively lost their shit. Yes? What does the acronym stand for? We don't know. Okay. We, we don't know Ava, right? We don't know Ava. Do you know right. the other ones? Syndicate Black Ops, we'll get to this. We have no idea. Okay. So, they're just, so it might just be French. The French people don't know. Okay, then we're just, no one no, knows. No, they're no, keeping no. this a secret because they keep saying one day they're going to release this game but it doesn't look like that's happening, and they're keeping this a secret. We don't know why. Okay. So anyways, I comes out, and this is finally when Struman Studios realizes what they're good at. Art design. I mean, just look at this character model right here. It's pretty sick. Yeah, it's pretty sick. This is made by 10 people who have real jobs while they're making this. Yeah. And their aesthetic is like this surrealist cyberpunk with like an ancient Chinese coat of paint on it. They speak French, and this is made in the Source Engine. 
It's like a weird combination of everything I kind of love in a game, and I'm really surprised that it actually exists. And because the visuals are so insane, and the translation to English in this game is horrible, there's a bunch of weird meme-worthy mo uh, moments. People keep calling you the messiah of rodents. There's never any context to that. So it was perfect to take screenshots of and put on like an online forum. And as a result, this game became a meme immediately and blew up. Now, don't let me fool you into thinking this is a good game. This is exactly like Syndicate Black Ops. <laughs> when you launch I, the first thing that happens is it prompts you to come up with your character's genetic code. <laughs> <laughs> they give you a bunch of random letters attached with string of mixed French and English techno babble. And they give you no context. You're clicking on items, trying your best to make a character, and you have no idea what you're creating. And if you don't click on the right things, you will make a character that is unplayable. <laughs> now, if you somehow manage to stumble upon a decent build, you are still fucked. Because this game is designed to be played, like, four times. And you, as you play through the campaign, you keep your levels. So when you first get into the game, the game is scaled for a level 60 character. <laughs> Everything kills you in one or two shots. The maps are as big as they are in this game. You have to walk across the entire map with hundreds of enemies. With eight different menus you have to click through to use your abilities. With like no cohesive tutorial to explain it. And you just have to beat your head against the wall until you get through it. This game, for having such ridiculous... Oh, one second. So I just want to go back, and I'm giving this game a really hard time, but there's a reason I played it for, like, six months straight. Once you get the hang of what the fuck is going on and you slog through those earlier levels, you can be Samurai Jack in the Matrix. You can <laughs> run on walls. You can possess people and explode their bodies. There is stealth. There is action. Every approach you want in a video game, you have. You can puzzle solve your way through everything. It is so much fun. These massive levels, once you can teleport, that's the fun of it. You can jump around these huge jungle gyms of a game. And there's a lot of videos on YouTube explaining the weird game mechanics of I, but I'm not going to go into it because we have much more important <laughs> stuff to get to. <clears throat> so, remember when I said Ava was a Warhammer ripoff? Yeah, I do. And I is based on Ava? Yeah. So Warhammer noticed that there are literally levels in I that are just Warhammer board games copied into level designs. <laughs> um, for the different demons and enemies you're fighting in this game, even though these people have great character design, they literally just took the models from Warhammer and added a different hue of graphic on them. So instead of suing them, Warhammer went, you know what, we kind of want to expand in the video game market, so you guys should come and make Warhammer games. So that's what they do. In 2016, they released Space Hulk, Deathwing, and that did pretty well, and now they're continuing to make Warhammer games, and that's awesome. It's really cool that these high school kids get to professionally adapt the board games they loved as kids into video games as adults. But the problem is, once they started working with people with money, they actually learned how to make games. Oh, they no! They have cohesive stories, Are you... gameplay, and it just feels kind of milky. No, you don't even create your character's own genetic code? This game sucks! Yeah, exactly! Trash! Trash. Bullshit. So, I is the only place where Stream Studios' full absurdity is realized, so we're going to delve into it. Now, the story of I is very difficult, because I is actually the third installment in a trilogy. So, the stories they played in their high school, like, basically D&D war game group, are all canon. And oh, yeah, Syndicate Black Ops... Hmm? Okay, cool. Syndicate Black Ops, before you load every multiplayer map, there's like a little instruction manual that explains the rule of the game and intermixes a bunch of technobabble. Turns out all that technobabble is very important. This game is a direct sequel to the plots that are happening in Ava. And if you can decode what's happening here, you have a chance of understanding what's happening in the third game, which is following the plots of both of these. But I takes this lore to a whole new level. When you get into the main base of the game, there is a library you can walk in. And there are literal non-fiction history books you can sit there and read. Every character in this game, all the NPCs you can talk to, and they will just start dumping exposition at you. And there are levels where you can like break into corporate computers and read their secret histories. 
None of this is any game relevance. Yes. Does anyone else smell burnt toast? It's the it's the light. Oh, I thought I was having a stroke. Go on. <laughs> no, no, you're good. <laughs> that light has a habit of catching on fire, but I'm keeping yeah. an eye on it. Very cool. <clears throat> Actually, the opposite of cool. It's okay. It's 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 just because there's melted like plastic and shit mm -hmm. on it from when we put plastic and shit. Oh no, I thought I thought I was just having a stroke. No worries no, if it's nice gonna be an actual fire. <laughs> so, anyways, there's. Insane exposition dumps everywhere, and you can tell the only reason this is in here is because this friend group cares so ridiculously much about this world and want to cram in everything, but their writing skills suck, yeah. so it's phrased in this horribly translated, inelegant manner. So I actually had to get the French version of this game, put it side by side with the translation, and with my seven years of French public education, I was able to vaguely figure stuff out. <laughs> so. Yay. Now, when people on the internet talk about the plot of this game, they tend to say it's a Warhammer 40k ripoff and leave it at that. And that is only touching the iceberg. So for the first time, on the internet, I'm going to explain to you the entire plot of the world of I Divine Cybermancy. Whoa! No one has ever outlined this before. Alright, so, first thing you need to understand, the world starts kind of diverging from ours in the 1890s. There is this thing called the Metastermonic Force, and essentially it is an energy source that is created by misery. If you make people miserable, that inherently just generates energy. So you know how the Nazis killed a bunch of Jews? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was just to increase the misery meter over oh here. <laughs> so Yay. all of the fucked up stuff of the 20th century raises the misery meter to about here. Okay. Once it gets to here, misery can take the form of demons and start killing you. Oh! Very cool. So, you cannot let it get to here. There is a secret society that goes back all the way to ancient China, and they're dedicated to keeping the misery meter below this level. All of this is in secret, so we're still on track for this. Wait, how has the energy gotten from the misery? Okay. It, 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 misery happens and now there's energy. So, so do, are people purposefully killing people to contribute to this, or do, does the general public not know? General public does not know. Okay. But the major governments of the world, right now, know this is a thing. Okay. And so they are engineering mass genocides just to increase this meter. We don't know how to harness this energy. We never figure it out. We are just researching it in hopes of one day maybe using it. So why are they killing more people? To get more energy out there so they can study it more. Okay. This is written by a bunch of 15-year-old guys. You're going to have to give me some leeway. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. So, apart from that, everything was normally until the 2100s, when essentially Earth becomes a capitalist hellhole. Like it is now? Oh, no. Whole new levels. Like Ferengi or beyond Ferengi? It's like 80 years. The consortium takes place. The consortium is a conglomeration of corporations that just decide that they're going to buy the planet, and so they merge and do it. CVS owns America, and it's cool. Wait, CBS or CVS? CVS. So, oh. like, the pharmacy. Mm -hmm. That's where the receipt comes There is a holy CVS receipt in the world. That's because CVS owned America and made, like, the corporation the world religion. Oh, my God. So, we're in, like, Blade Runner hell. Okay. But because the corporations are running the planet, they use up our resources, like, instantly. And they go, shit, unless we start a space program, we are all going to die. So the private sector gets us to Mars in like a few years. Incidentally, in discovering Mars, we discover something called the intergalactic space. This is basically a giant highway that we have access to that can get us anywhere in the universe. We don't know if aliens built it or if it's naturally occurring. And humanity goes, fuck, that's scary. We just colonized our first planet. We're not ready for this. So we're just going to put that to the side and not worry about it. So the consortium takes over Mars and also turns Mars to a capitalist hellhole. Everyone is living in abject poverty. The no! Get a little bit higher. No! Let's go. Now, Earth is worse off because Earth literally has no resources. So we're all starving. Essentially, uh, Mars is getting by a little bit better. But Mars decides that because the corporations came from Earth, Earth is the source of all of their oppression. So one day, out of nowhere, with alien weaponry, they press a button and just instantly kill two-thirds of everybody on Earth. Wait, with a press of a button? How? 
We don't know. They got oh, okay. from the intergalactic highway. They got access to alien tech uh, out of nowhere, and all of a sudden they just attack Earth. Wait, but I thought they were ignoring the highway. The government was. The people of Mars, oh. all of a sudden, somehow get access to this highway and get access to ridiculous weaponry. Then they proceed to kill almost all of the corporate overlords on their planet and force them into hiding. Yay. But this is kind of like if a bunch of Amazon workers in LA decided that Africa was the root of all of their problems oh. and just bombed all of the African manufacturers. So stuff is really bad on Earth. Two thirds of people die, society collapses, there's no corporate structure anymore. Everyone forms this planetary government called the Federation that is completely dedicated to building up a military and fighting back Mars in case they try this shit again. So the corporations are going, this really doesn't look good for us. These Mars people want to kill us, and this Earth people no longer respects our authority. So how can we make this better? What they decide to do is make a deal with the Federation, which is the Earth Army, and say, we'll supply you with weapons, you'll take over Mars. And they notice because the Federation is like this really simple military government, they think they could probably politically take it over, and then they could run Earth and Mars again just as they did. So they start getting to work building ridiculously powerful weapons. And they're thinking the people on Earth are going to be stupid, so they need to make like really user-friendly, easy-to-use stuff. It turns out the most easy-to-use technology is magic, because fireballs are really intuitive. So they start building <laughs> weapons of mass destruction in easy-to-use packages, and they send it over to the Federation. Well, it turns out the Federation are not idiots. They have been spending this time studying Buddhism, and they have searched deep within their soul, and they have unlocked psychic powers. Are you serious? <laughs> so, <laughs> Federation troops can literally walk into your mind, rip parts of you out, place things in your subconscious to give you new fears, and just if they're in the same room as you, they can torture you from the inside out. <laughs> <laughs> so these psychic ninjas are all of a sudden given the most advanced magic weaponry in the world, and they go, all right, let's attack Mars. So Mars has this alien tech, right? Turns out they don't have a lot of it. Most of their military is actually outdated 21st century, like helicopters and guns. So these psychic ninjas just come in and kill everyone. Yeah. No more Mars. They're Mars is gone? Mars is not gone, but all the people on Mars and the people by government, killed. Dead. <laughs> the Federation takes over Earth and Mars. The Consortium politically takes over the Federation. And we're back to capitalist hell. Yay. No! Oh, now yay. you say no, but this is actually a good thing. Because it turns out that alien weaponry Mars got involved in was some bad shit. The second you touch it, you get filled with this uncontrollable urge to kill everything. I have that urge all the time. I don't know what you're talking about. It also gives you the ability and the intelligence to do it. So the political leaders of Mars were playing the long game to wipe out all life in the universe. Mm. So it was good we got rid of them, I guess. But the corporations get a lot worse. So it turns out during all this time, the internet on Earth has been running. We kept it working. It collapses around the 2200s. Wait, so like no internet at this, after this point, right? Internet crashes. No internet at the 2200s. Okay. So the corporations offer their alternative to the internet. They're going to build it from the ground up. They're going to build it greater and better. And it's going to be called the Matrix. So what the Matrix is, is they wire the internet directly into your head. Uh, yep. There's a problem with this. Yeah. The second they wire you in, you become part of the corporate hive mind. Mm. Now the thing running the corporate hive mind is an AI they put together to make perfect capitalist slaves. Now all of humanity is put into this. So now humanity is one entity that is a tortured and miserable soul. Uh... Actually, well, you're probably up here at this point. Oh, oh no! So now, this capitalist evil thing decides, we're gonna go into the universe we're ready now to start exploring. We know there's aliens out there. This could be fun. So they explore for a hundred years, everywhere in the universe, because they have access to it, right? They find no alien life. Until one day, in the year 2300, they come across a planet with a crashed alien ship on it. And so... We send a research team to just grab everything we can, bring it back to a station for studying. Five minutes later, we get our first message publicly from extraterrestrial life. It says, give us our ship back or we will kill all of you. 
humanity, now remember at this point, humanity is one hive mind. Our plan is to pretend we didn't hear them, <laughs> and just keep studying them anyways and give it back. This doesn't work, and out of nowhere, a bunch of fighter ships show up in our space. They are called the Oris. Now, the Oris look nothing like the ship that crashed, but that's not really an issue, because they still kill us all instantly. At this point, we have 1,200 planets. Most of them get destroyed. Earth is fucking gone. Oh, okay. No so like, Earth. Wait, when you say what? there's 1,200 planets, you mean total in the universe? No, like, the humanity controls and is colonized. Okay, so... And the aliens wipe out all life on, like, most of them. We maybe have, like, 50. All right. That's a backwards five, but that'll do. <laughs> How many humans are there left? Are, is humanity, like, fucked, or...? I, I think they're good for humanity. But then, all of a sudden, the ship comes in, they call it the Black, and this ship is the one, it looks just like the one that crash-landed on the planet earlier. The second the ore see the ship, they run. Out of the ship come a bunch of magical king fuckers. They go into the research station where the humans got the artifacts, kill all of them, take the artifacts back to their ship, and them and their crash ship vanish. So humanity is kind of left in the wake of this horrible disaster. And then we get to this section. Now this section is in blue, because originally this is called the Lost Years. We didn't oh. know what happened to it. We just cut from this to this. It's the Void Century for One Piece. That's sick. Now, this is actually, I think, really lazy writing. Because essentially, I think these guys discovered that they made humanity so... F oh, by the way, in this war, the misery meter got higher. Working it out. Yeah. Yeah. In this cool. war... <clears throat> oh, yeah. So, like, things got so miserable that you couldn't actually tell an interesting story. So they just suddenly skipped to the future where things were kind of better. Yeah. And later they added a bunch of background lore, and originally I was going to make you come here and like work my way back, but that's way too confusing, so we're just going to keep going. Okay. Yeah. So, humanity gets most of their planets destroyed, right? This is good, because we get woken up from the corporate hive mind. All of a sudden we have our individuality back. Now, the Matrix still exists, but we're no longer tied to it, so it's kind of loose. The best way to explain it is, you know how, like, you're very clearly you, you understand the boundaries of you? Yeah. When we were in the corporate hive mind, those boundaries were gone. Now the boundaries are just fuzzy. So you can slip inside another person. But, <clears throat> you also Gross. can be yourself. So if you're not careful, you'll just accidentally fall and lose yourself in the Matrix. So like Evangelion. Kind of, yeah. But if you know how to focus it right, you have access to other people's souls just through the Matrix, and you can manipulate them. That is different from the psychic powers. Your character has access to both. The mechanics are very different. So, we wake up, but, and the, uh, everyone remembers who they were, and the Federation goes, okay, the corporations, you fucking suck. So they, the Federation bands back together and just starts mass killing a bunch of these people. And they violently overtake all of the human governments that form, recapture all 1,200 of their planets, and finally get humanity back on track. Here's the problem. There was a lot of bloodshed involved, and we get right up oh, here. Oh, no! That's, all it okay, takes. That's yes. barely at the top, right? Yep. Okay. All it takes, one serial killer shows up. Oh, no. He pushes it over. So, the serial killer, one day, the second he commits just enough suffering, he's walking, and this deer walks up to him, and this deer was the first animal he killed as a child. Uh, and then the deer starts talking to him. Ah! Uh, I hate deer. And then the deer grabs his mouth, pushes it open, and walks inside of him. Oh, no! <laughs> so, the government takes notice of this, because this, like, he turns into this weird entity that everybody sees differently. Everybody sees their worst fear in it. So the government goes, okay, this is the problem. They send a small squad to take it out. Squad dies instantly. This is when the secret of Corum from all the way back here comes back. And they go, don't worry. We have been studying these demons for like centuries. We got this. Now here's where it's important to know that the secret of Corum is shit at their job. So they send in their elite team. They die instantly. Yeah. 
So the Federation goes, okay, you guys are a bunch of like weird old academic people. You just don't know how to fight. So how about you teach our psychic ninjas everything you know, and the psychic ninjas will go and take care of the demon for us. By the way, uh, months are passing during this, so the demon is just going ham and killing everyone around here. So a bunch of Federation troopers study the secret decorum magic rituals, and they form I. That is the same I that this game is named after. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, I comes in, and they're actually effective. They come in and kill the demon instantly, and we go, okay, we have I, we're good. Problem is, while this demon was running around killing people, people started to worship it. Uh -oh. There is major religion spreading across all 1,100 of these planets that start saying, we deserve this punishment for our sins. So we should worship this demon as our god. So when the eye comes in and kills God, they get upset and they say, okay, we're just going to start terrorist attacking the whole world. Problem is, this thing stacks. The second you hit the top of the misery meter, every single thing of misery you inflict just creates more demons. These demons kill things, kind of like how people who touch the thing on Mars kill things. Keep that in mind. Ooh. So... <clears throat> Uh, the uh, Smidger Meter just skyrockets and everybody will die. So I goes in, kills all of the terrorists, and at the same time makes the world a better place, and the Misery Meter goes down. You that can make the Misery Meter go down by doing good things? Yes. Why didn't we do that before? Because we were too busy being in Hyper Capital's Tell. Okay, uh, fair. Did you not know about it? Oh, uh, we figured out about it right here. When the demon showed up, that's when like secret form finally came out and told people what the fuck was going well, on. Why didn't they say it before? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> so, I makes the world a better place. Kill the demons, uh, all the terrorists, and this is within like two days. The world is okay again, and the secret decorum comes out of this looking really good. So everyone is like really happy. The secret decorum exists, protected them from demons. Everyone's okay. They use this newfound publicity to form a city. And this city's on an abandoned planet, essentially it's supposed to be a research station, where they can live in peace, study the misery meter, and just be prepared and have new weapons if it ever comes back again. Remember how we said the secret decorum is shit at their job? So they fail so bad at architecture design that their city doesn't work. People just start starving because the farming machines won't turn on. The water piping is incorrect. So, the corporations, for the first time, come back and become relevant and say, you know what, we'll start selling you stuff to get you back on track. Secure Sikorum is stupid, they agree. The corporations take over and it becomes hyper-capital as hell. <laughs> so the Federation is just looking at this and going, seriously guys? They send the eye to take over the corporations, get them out of there, and they get the Secure Sikorum back to their city, right? Okay. And then the Federation says, okay, I, how about you just hang out there and make sure they don't do anything stupid and just act as guards? Well, all of a sudden, Secure Sikorum starts building weapons of mass destruction. They start building planet destroyers. Everything. Things that blow up galaxies. The Federation checks in with I, and they're like, hey, we noticed you were building weapons of mass destruction and we didn't authorize this. What's going on here? And I says, we must build more weapons to be prepared for the possibility of demons. The eye soldiers are not smart, and they've fallen into their religion. So now they are ridiculously devout religious warriors who want nothing more than to prepare for this battle. No. While all of this is going on, the Oris come back. Turns out, now that we're no longer a capitalist slave hive mind, the Oris are really chill, and they're like, Oh, hey humanity, I'm glad you, you got out of that phase. Proud of you. But why are you still alive? And we're like, what? And they're like, didn't the, the black ship come back and kill all of you? And we were like, no. And they're like, oh, that just means the main fleet hasn't arrived yet. Okay, they'll probably kill you all in a few years. And the Federation goes, what the fuck? Okay. This is the <laughs> <laughs> so they start working with the Oris to mount a military defense. They find the black fleet. They go over. They find like they have a hidden planet that they're preparing the invader from. They move a bunch of troops over to fight them. Well, I hate this. Because you're moving troops, and these troops could be used to fight the Metastermonic Force if it maybe comes back someday. 
The misery meter is back here. Okay. So, going back. The misery meter is like here, right? We are in no danger of getting close to here at any time in the near future. But I is just flipping out the military resources are being used for anything despite this. So, while the Federation has all their troops fighting the Black, I launches a full-scale invasion on the Federation. Hmm. Uh, this ends up being a horribly bloody battle that brings the misery meter all the way up. Oh! Yeah. And this time, they don't catch it and it just spirals. There is no bringing it back. It's gone it's infinitely high. Seeker Sakura failed at their job, didn't they? Yes. So now I is here to like try to fight the demons. It turns out they're completely unprepared. The demons destroy their planet immediately. I is dead. So, Seeker, uh, the Federation talks to Seeker Sakura and goes, were you responsible for attacking us or was that I? And they go, that was all their idea. So they start working together. The Federation goes, look, we still need to deal with these people, we'll send you a few troops, but mostly you need to handle these demons on your own. This is your job. Secret Sikor is shit at their job. <laughs> so they bring back I in secret to kill demons because they don't know how to do it. The Federation knows that I exists, but they kind of pretend not to. And they're like, you know what, they're the only people who can kill demons. If they want to do that, do their thing. That's great. I gets all of their funding now by looting civilians. So I will just attack civilian ships, take all of their stuff, and then use it to fund their war on demons. Okay. Eventually the Feder- <clears throat> I'm going- I forgot something very important. Remember back when I first started building massive weapons? Yeah. The Federation tried to solve this problem by splitting them into two factions. The Coulters and the Jam. The whole purpose of these two factions is to keep each other in check and make sure they never went crazy and tried to kill everybody. Obviously that failed. But what's really interesting is it's heavily implied that these divisions are based on racial lines. All of the cultures look like crusaders, and all of the GMs look like ancient Chinese warriors. Hmm. And there is intense racial hatred between these two. Hmm. That is all of the background. This is where we start in I. You are thrown in the middle, you're supposed to understand all of this coming in. <laughs> I need you to put all everything you know about this on pause for a second so we can start with the plot of I. First thing that happens, you wake up with no memory of who you are or where you are. But you do know your entire genetic structure. Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, there's a man in front of you, he has six bullet holes in his head and you're holding the gun. Cool. Then you get a call from the guy you just shot and says, all right, it looks like you failed your mission. I've been told you might have some memory issues, but you need to trust me, get to the extraction point. So you get there, you get taken to your base, and you get essentially a message from yourself explaining, look, I know this is scary, but in your line of work, your memory gets erased all the time. Don't worry about it. Let me explain what's going on. Two paragraphs of incomprehensible lore. Let me sift through it. You are working for the secret Sikorum. Yeah! The Secret Sikorum, yeah, you are a nerd. You are an old man, boring nerd. The Secret Sikorum <laughs> hates the Federation. They think that the Federation should be fighting these guys and not wasting their time fighting these guys. So they want to kill the Federation and take over. That is your goal. You are incapable of fighting them because you have no military. So you're trying to convince I to fight them for you. But I is so fucking caught up in this fake war between these guys that they're not doing anything. Right now, I is in a proxy war against the Federation. The Federation doesn't know this. The Federation thinks I is on their side, that I is at war with the Federation. But I is also at war with itself, the Coulters and the Jan. You are from the Secret Sikor. You're going undercover as a Coulter in I so that you can stop the infighting and get I to kill the Federation. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So, it turns out your immediate superior, your mentor, the guy you killed, he is a Coulter, and he's on the same project. He's also secretly working for the security forum. His boss's boss, your boss's boss, your commander, he's a Coulter, and all he wants to do is kill the Jan. He never explains why, he just says they are worthless rascals and all need to be killed. He is racist. His commander is working for Secret Sikorum. So your commander orders you to help subvert 
his commander by fighting them. But in order to do that, you have to subvert your own commander. But you have to subvert your own commander, kind of, because it turns out your own commander has this weird own agenda, so you have to report back to them. <laughs> okay. This is like three levels deep. Oh, we'll get there. I'm, I'm assuming there's a 99 maxim, right? <laughs> All right, are you following vaguely so far? Yeah. Lots of people, lots of weird stuff going on in Chain of Command, and you gotta figure it out. Your Chain of Command is a fucking mess. Also, it turns out we finally found an artifact on Mars that might be the artifact they used to kill everyone on Earth way back in the day. Our contact with aliens right now is very limited. The Ors took all of the loot from the Blacks, and we have none of that. The ores don't really talk to us. They, like, are silent and walk around and occasionally pass us a message. So studying this artifact could teach us everything. So your whole goal, while all of this is going on, is also to get a hold of this artifact. Here's the weird thing. If you explore in your base, you can clearly see that you already have the artifact. It's in the place, but you're still running out and going to get it. Here's the next weird thing. Remember how these demons can take the form of your worst fear? The main demon you're fighting is a very unimposing looking woman with her eyes cut out. And you have no idea what's up with that. So, you get to the game, it turns out your mentor, the one who's supposed to be working with you in the secret Sikorum, actually has his own agenda. He wants to research this artifact from Mars because it has the secrets of life in it. If you research this, you will just know everything. For some reason you don't understand, you know this is a bad idea, so you stop him. The second you kill him, you end up in this surreal space with your mentor and commander both hanging out. And they're like, you really suck at this, try again. You wake up in the cave with no memory of who you are and where you are. That's your first replay. The game loops endlessly like this. If you do an insane amount of gameplay stuff and unlock the secret ending, you discover that what happened is a long time ago, you were actually a culter, and you stole this artifact, right? And you guys figured out how dangerous this was, anyone who touched it becomes a blood-killing monster, just like these things and just like these things. So you're not supposed to touch it. Your wife does it anyways, because she wants to know the secrets of the universe. And after she goes down, she is ordered to be punished by having her eyes cut out. And you have to do it. So, the second you cut her eyes out, your guilt gets so high that you lose hold of your consciousness, and you fall into the matrix. Also, your suffering is so much that the metastromatic force circles around you, and the combination of the Matrix and the Metastromatic Force trap you in this weird, surreal dream world. Also, for whatever reason, your consciousness is split up into three different people. You are you, you are your mentor, and you are your commander. Those are three parts of yourself that are representing your different political feelings. Because apparently your character cares so much about the politics of this world, <laughs> that there are actually three different political people competing inside your own soul. Aren't there all for everyone? So it turns inside out. If you were three politicians, <laughs> yes. one is named Chris, and one, one is of you is a fucking racist who <laughs> wants to kill all the Chinese people. Oh my god. So your commander and your mentor are the two parts of you that have already accepted that they don't want to be part of the cycle of suffering and they're ready to move on to Nirvana. If you unlock the secret ending, you have the choice of going back into the cycle of guilt, which is what this is called, or you can leave and achieve Nirvana. If you leave and achieve Nirvana, you effectively retire your character. This is a multiplayer game, so playing the single player levels up your multiplayer character, so to achieve Nirvana, you have to give up everything. Everything in single player or multiplayer? Both. So oh. it's like, it's like, what the fuck are you doing playing video games? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you achieve Nirvana, you just stop playing video games and yeah. go outside. And have a real life. Yes. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> this is written into the game. <laughs> stop writing.
writing genetic code for your own character. <laughs> Go outside and touch grass. Go outside. Now, eventually, people get really pissed off at this, so they added a way to get back into the cycles of people. Ooh, that sucks. God damn it. So you can return to the torture hell. Cowards. Now. You might be wondering what kind of drugs were these people on to come up with all of this shit? Oh, wow. Warhammer 40k. Hmm? This is clear. What kind of drugs is it? Acid. Yes. Warhammer. So wait, no, was that real? Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Um, um. We don't actually know if it was acid, but we know it's psychedelics. How old are they? How old are the people who made it? Okay. There's so no like, public information on these people. But so we know they were in high school, school in 1998. Ah, oh, fuck. Okay, yeah, probably LC then. They're roughly 40 at this okay. point. Okay. We don't know exactly, because again, you can't look these people up. I tried. Well, did you call them? I, I, that was my, originally I wanted to talk to them and talk through all of this shit, but they, they are uncontactable. Oh, yeah. They're also French, so that would be hard. Well, I knew enough, and everyone in France speaks, everyone in France speaks English. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, that's I guess. The only contact information the studio has, apart from like their professional thing, they're talking to Warhammer with, is this tiny, clearly homemade site in the '90s. Aww. And I don't think there's ever any responses to those emails. They release a random newsletter like every five years just to take pictures of I. <laughs> And Syndicate Black Ops. Like in 2007, they released something that was just screenshots from the game they made in 2002. Yeah, okay. So remember this gap I was telling you about? Unreal? This is when they got really into drugs. Oh boy! They just, again, everything I'm about to tell you, I parsed through like forums on French internet. This is a combination of Google Translate and knowing a tiny bit of French. Now, yeah. on these forms, it is very difficult to confirm what is conspiracy theory and what is leaked interviews from the creators. Both are out there. I did my best to be as reliable as I could, but it's possible some of what I told you is speculation. I tried. This is the closest you're going to get in your lifetime. <laughs> so, these people got really into drugs, discovered the secret to getting enlightenment. What drugs? Psychedelics. LSD. Okay. And so they wanted to make a game that taught people enlightenment. They were going to make it in the Unreal Engine, and that's all we know about it. God, that's so funny. The game so funny. fell apart. They could not make it. And it turns out when I came out, they decided that the problem was the game was, like, too intellectual for people. They needed to make something that was more digestible so they could get their message through. So that's so This the AI. is, like, digestible. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so remember there's some weird stuff going on with all uh, the Ministry, the Black, and the Morrison Artifact? Here's what's going on. Turns out, logically, whenever you get to a high enough technological level and you discover the things of life, you realize that life sucks. And you just become, like, anti-life and want to kill everything. That's just the logical endpoint to thinking. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like in real life. The, re the Martian and the Black are not associated. They're just two civilizations that got advanced enough tech to realize that they should be killing everybody. The only reason they're still alive is because they need to kill more people. The metasomatic force is the universe realizing this. <laughs> <laughs> now this leaves some questions. Why does it come from suffering? Because the people need to die, get out. Yeah, but why does so much suffering coalesce in the monsters? It's just... It's yeah, the life. The and the Black. Remember when the Black showed up to humanity and only took their stuff back and didn't kill any of us? Yeah. I mean, the, there was a fleet that was coming back to kill people. There right? was a fleet coming back. But they clearly could have taken us out then. So why did they need to send the fleet? Nobody knows. Well, the fleet was already coming. They probably just needed to pick up some stuff. They needed to pick up the prescriptions before the yeah. whole Earth so, got destroyed. <clears throat> Now, here's the reason why the single-player plot is important. The truth is, throughout all of this, the natural force of every civilization is terrible, horrible, kill everybody. But there are a few individuals who, throughout the progression of evil society, manage to slip into cracks and achieve enlightenment. Now, remember, everybody, kind of that Eastern philosophy of everybody is one person? Times four. Yeah, okay. The time is four. Everybody is one person, right? So if one person achieves enlightenment, in a weird way, everybody does, 
So not only are you yourself and the two other people you fractured in, you are literally all of existence in this game. Wait, every character is you? Everything, literally everything. Every atom is you. Well, yeah, that's that's a, yeah. Yeah. That's and so massive. when you finally <laughs> achieve enlightenment, you redeem the entire world if you're willing to give up your character. Which is why it's such bullshit they added a way to get back into David the game. David Cage moment. David Cage moment. So also the goal of this game was by coming to Nirvana through your character, when you finally let go you would have to let go of your most prized possession on Earth, this game. And then you would achieve enlightenment and save humanity. I Divine Cybermancy was a game designed to save everyone's soul. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yay! I feel saved just by listening to that. Oh, you yeah. saved, Dad? I feel pretty saved.